I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist, and this is Advocate Today. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is responding to Disney's new lawsuit. Walt Disney Parks and Resorts is accusing him and his allies of violating the company's constitutional rights. Disney says it is a victim of targeted retaliation as punishment for speaking out against the governor's anti-LGBTQ+, anti-diversity policies. DeSantis says the lawsuit lacks merit. They don't want to have to pay the same taxes as everybody else, and they want to be able uh, to control uh, things without proper oversight, which every other Floridian has to have this, this type of, of oversight, all Florida businesses. So it's, um, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit much uh, to, to be complaining about that. I don't think the suit has merit. I think it's political. Disney and the previous board reached an agreement in February just before that board was dissolved. Bud Light sales are down amid a controversy surrounding transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney. The brewing giant met with wholesalers to correct what it calls misinformation and confusion. Anheuser-Busch says Mulvaney was given one can that was not for sale to the general public. Since early April, Bud Light pours at bars and restaurants declined by 6%, according to Beer Board, which tracks sales data. Pours for rival beers were up 15%. Bud Light has made leadership changes and placed two Bud Light execs on leave, including Alyssa Heinerscheid, who said in a recent podcast interview that Bud Light needs to attract young drinkers to ensure the company's future. Meanwhile, GOP lawmakers continue to call for boycotts of Bud Light. 2024 presidential candidate Nikki Haley misgendered Mulvaney purposefully during a town hall in Iowa. And have any of y'all seen Dylan Mulvaney? Do you know who that is on the beer cans? Let me tell you something. I know that there are transgender people out there. That is not a transgender person. That is a guy dressing up like a girl, making fun of women. Every one of you women have seen that. We don't act like that. Yet companies are glorifying him. And then we're supposed to tell our girls, be strong and be confident? What are we doing? The former UN ambassador also spoke in favor of laws like Florida's Don't Say Gay Law. Haley launched her presidential campaign in February. Tennessee State Representative Justin Pearson is telling Harvard students that democracy is being taken away from people at the local and state level. Pearson took part in a forum on democracy, race, and gun violence in America at Harvard. He spoke in response to what's happening in Montana and the comparisons to his home state. He says Montana Representative Zoe Zephyr is being silenced because she wants to stand up for transgender kids' health care. And we're seeing this in Montana now, where a transgender representative is being silenced by the majority party because she wants to stand up on behalf of transgender kids whose health care is not being affirmed. This is, we need to support her. We need to support all of the people in our country and in our community who are advocating for justice. And we need to recognize that instead of them being supported by the people in power, they're told to be quiet. They're told to comply to be silently complicit. And if you don't, if you refuse, then you're told you don't belong here. Your people's voice doesn't belong here. You deserve to be expelled. Pearson says we need to support people like Zephyr who are advocating for justice, but are being told to be quiet by people who are in power. Meanwhile, Zoe Zephyr is beginning her GOP-imposed exile with renewed confidence. Zephyr says the vote to silence her has only amplified her message. I left yesterday with my head held high, knowing I had made a moral and right choice. I know my community inside and out. I walked through it every day for years prior to my election, and they elected me to speak on their behalf and to fight the hard fights, which is what I did, and they're proud of me for doing so. Zephyr was thrust into the national spotlight last week when she was prevented from speaking in the House after telling lawmakers backing a bill to ban gender-affirming medical care for minors that they would have blood on their hands. Zoe Zephyr now has a new, bigger platform. The 34-year-old is serving her first term representing a western Montana college town. She's been banned from the house, the gallery, and the waiting room, but not from public spaces. And she'll still be able to participate and vote remotely. Joining me now is Advocate.com senior national reporter, Christopher Wiggins. Christopher, we saw the actions of the GOP backfire in Tennessee. Has the same thing happened here in Montana? Well, you know, 
it's it's likely that it's going to backfire in Montana because you know as you know in Tennessee the Tennessee three two black and one white uh, lawmaker were you know accused of breaking decorum there as well and then the Republicans in the state went ahead and expelled two the two black members of the legislature there here in this case you know Zoe Zephyr has gotten to be you know a shiny star in the Democratic Party now because of the attention that this has gotten. And it would appear that, you know, although they have been able to ban her from, you know, participating in the legislative process as far as it's concerned personally, physically, you know, expelling her from the chamber is not a good look for them. And that's certainly something that's going to be at the forefront of any of the, uh, you know, challenges to this, the, to this outcome. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, you recently got a chance to speak with Zoe, and uh, what do we know about her, her background, and uh, some of her politics? Yeah, so, you know, she and I spoke last week when, uh, at first, when the uh, controversy surrounding some of the words that she spoke on the House floor started. And so we discussed a little bit about her advocacy and the fact that she didn't feel that she had said anything wrong. To so kind of explain a little bit about what happened. You know, the Republicans in Montana were trying to move a bill to ban gender affirming care for young people. And as the lone uh, elected transgender member of the legislature, uh, Representative Zephyr went ahead and spoke vociferously against that bill. In her conversation, she met, or in her debate, she said that, you know, the next time that the Republicans were to look down at their hands and bowing their heads in the invocation, the prayer at the beginning of the session, they would see blood on their hands. Of course, now Republicans found that to be so extreme of a comment. I don't really see how that was one, but they felt as though it was so extreme of a comment that it required a level of censure. And then on Monday, after she was prevented from speaking for days on the legislation ahead of the Montana legislature, uh, her supporters went into the gallery of the chamber and essentially chanted, let her speak, and she held up a microphone that she was holding that wasn't on, it was left off, but to represent that the words and the, the thoughts of her constituents were being heard. So that's kind of spiraled into this whole mess, and she just finds herself being, you know, a vigorous spokesperson in defense of trans rights. Yeah, well, I wonder, would you talk a little bit about the anti-transgender law that uh, sparked the censure and what is the status of that? What is the likelihood that this will be passed? Yeah, so the law that they that, that uh, Representative Zephyr was opposing was one that would ban access to gender-affirming care for, for you, which is a crusade that the Republicans are on uh, this election cycle. They feel as though providing care to young people uh, is something that shouldn't be done, which is, you know, interesting since the word care, you know, in and of itself is, represents being there for other people. So, you know, the, the bill ended up passing and it's pretty likely that the Republican governor is going to sign it. Yeah. Uh, well, also, I did see that the ACLU uh, has gotten involved. Can you talk a little bit about that, please? Yeah, so the ACLU uh, appears to be poised to challenge this uh, this, this move. Um, it does seem as though there are significant constitutional issues with you know, not only preventing an elected member of, uh, of, a, of a legislative body from speaking, but also you know trying to eliminate access to health care for an entire group of people based on politics and not medicine. Uh, and so the ACLU, as it always does, has uh, shown interest in this case and in this issue and is likely going to uh, conduct some action. Great. Well, Christopher Wiggins, senior national reporter for The Advocate, thank you so much for your time and for being here today. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist.